Hi, Chris Scott again back with Clinical Training Consulting System. So we're talking about two more conditions, that's polymyalgia rheumatica and scleroderma. Something you may not hear a lot of in the training industry, but something I think that's important with this concept, I mean with this course to teach you, polymyalgia rheumatica is inflammation within the large arteries within the spine. Um, it is an inflammatory condition, it is more deeper than um, fibromyalgia and affects women over 60, um, typically women who have the endomorph bill, kind of that pear-shaped round um, structure, who have a little bit extra body fat, um, they're not as flexible, a little more stiffer, especially in the hip flexors, they may be sitting on quite a bit, things like stress at work, home, personal issues, um, they're going to be on probably medications from antidepressants and anxiety, and there are a handful to work with, I'll be honest with you. I've only seen probably three to five of my career as 14 years as a therapist. So I think it's important to talk to their doctor, um, get information about uh, what they've been through, um, and really work together with them and carefully put together a program by active, really listening, and slow and controlled program design. Key thing for training for recommendations is the water again is huge. Yoga is huge, Pilates. Being supportive, I think getting them to walk and do something light, light weight bearing. Um, starting with maybe a recumbent bite, getting into the maybe stationary and then elliptical, but not doing heavy intensity things like kettlebells or T-Rex. You're just gonna basically flare them up and they're gonna be really very sore. They also need to work in on rhomboid strengthening, um, posterior delt, low traps and then lower back. So a program that is all encompassing working on large muscles to small muscles, I think is ideal, and stretching like we've talked about before. In contrast, scleroderma. Scleroderma is a condition that affects um, the spine. It actually creates a, a excessive connective tissue due to excessive collagen deposition. Remember, collagen is a protein, so they'll get a thickening. Typically, it could be in the spine, it could be in the hands. Um, again, something I haven't seen a lot of in my career, um, they're very stiff and they may have issues with flexibility, which is definitely very common. And that's again being be able to bend over, um, being able to put a shirt on to get dressed. Um, things that they can't do and also having really poor endurance. So I think important to work with them again slowly, working with them on posture. If they're coming in with a posture pelvic tilt, you want to get them to try to work on lengthening their hamstrings and extensors and strengthening abdominals. If they're in that anterior pelvic tilt, which they may be, working on stretching the tight hip flexors, strengthening abdominals, and trying to get a little more neutral balance. Second one working on, we've been talking about, rows, reverse fly, extra rotation, huge important to work on posture, light exercise to start with, low reps, building on high repetitions, 10, 12, 15 to help with their muscular endurance. I think that is huge. And I think if you can work together with these kind of clientele or patients, or people who have these conditions, they'll do well pretty slowly, but always consult with their doctor and call a therapist if you have any questions. In the next section, we'll be talking about common shoulder injuries and dysfunctions and respective training accordingly.